my name is Roy Simpson. I'm a professor of mathematics at Summit River College in Sacramento, California. And this is another proof in my series of uh, proofs in differential calculus. This proof is for continuity of compositions. And as you can read by the theorem here that I have typed out, uh, we're going to prove that if you have a continuous function, uh, or a function that is continuous at A, we'll call that function G, and if you have another function F, that is continuous at g of a, so that output that g delivers when you plug a into it, then the, com the composite function or the composition of the two functions f of g of a is continuous at a itself. Probably summarized in better terms, it just means that you have continuity for g at a and continuity for f evaluated at g at a implies continuity for the composition of f and g at A. And that's actually sort of redundant almost. It seems as though that last statement is the same thing as this statement right here. It seems very, very close, very similar, because if you if you know anything about compositions, you happen to know that F composed with G at A is symbolically easier written as f of g of a. So it's almost saying continuity at f of g of a implies continuity at f of g of a. But we'll go ahead and prove it anyway, uh, just because it's a common theorem in a calculus textbook. As far as prerequisite knowledge goes, you're going to have to be very familiar with limits, uh, with continuity. Uh, by the way, I might as well just go ahead and write down what continuity really means. So if g is continuous at a, it means that the limit as your x values approach a of your function g will actually approach and eventually equal g evaluated at a. Basically means that your function doesn't have a hole in it, doesn't have a jump discontinuity or a removable discontinuity or an infinite discontinuity at a. So this is, oops, this is what your function might look like. From the left and from the right, the limits approach A, and when you plug in A, I'm sorry, from the left and right, the limits approach G of A. You'll find that I often misspeak. I don't mean to. It's just I'm writing uh, and taking care of technical stuff and um, speaking all at the same time. So anyway, as X approaches A, your outputs approach G of A, and if you plugged in A, you would also be at that value. So that's what continuity means. Finally, uh, you'll just have to remember what uh, composition of functions is. And so let me write that. Those are the th items that we really need for this proof. Also for understanding the concept. As well as like al algebra, right? You have to know how to graph, all that fun stuff. So as a graphical example, I think we should start off with uh, this. Which looks like a horrible function. The stuff in red is G. So it's, it's a piecewise uh, defined function. Uh, and the stuff in blue is f, and that would be, also be a piecewise defined function. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and show that uh, f composed with g of x is actually continuous at 2. And recall by the definition, or I'm sorry, by the theorem, to show that it's continuous at 2, we have to first show that it's continuous, that g is continuous at 2, and then that f is continuous at g of 2. So we'll go ahead and do that. So here we go, we look and we ask, is g continuous at x equals 2? Well, here's x equals 2 right there. So I'll see if the limit for the function g from the left and the right is exactly the same as what g is when I plug in 2. And I can easily see that the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x is actually equal to a height of negative 2. And by the way, that is exactly what would have happened if I had plugged in 2 into g. So remember, continuity from our prerequisite knowledge base, continuity tells us that uh, g is continuous at, at 2 if when x approaches 2, g of x approaches g of a, or g of 2. So the answer to that question is, heck yeah. We, we totally have that continuity working for us for g at x equals 2. Now, remember 
that f composed with g of x is f of g of x. So f composed with g of 2 means that whatever my output is when I plug 2 in for x, or maybe I should say whatever the output of g is when I plug 2 in for x, I need to then worry about what that output does when I plug it into f. So we happen to know that g of x is approaching negative 2. So we need to ask ourselves, is f continuous at g of 2, which is that height of negative 2. So when we are approaching uh, an input, an original input of 2, g is approaching an output of negative 2, and we're going to be plugging that into f. So let's see, we're going to be plugging this negative 2 here into f, and it looks to me, if I look up here, I'm just going to pretend that I drew this properly, it looks to me that when I plug negative 2 into the function f, the output looks to be about 3, and in fact, it looks to me as though the limit as our inputs approach negative 2 for f actually do approach uh, 3, which is f of negative 2. So f is also continuous at negative 2. So that's a check mark there. That means that f of g of x is continuous at x equals 2. And it would make, uh, it would look better if we had composed these functions and, and actually t took a look at what the comp composite graph looked like, but this is a very tough one to actually compose. Uh, but anyway, that's the basic idea behind what we're going to do, what we need, why we need to prove this, and how the proof kind of works, and, or how this theorem kind of works. Now let's go ahead and start the proof. If uh, we go ahead back to the theorem itself, remember all proofs we start with our suppositions. Our suppositions here are things they hand us that are allowed to be assumed, basically the stuff following the word if, and we will not be able to assume anything after the word then. So we only get to assume that g is continuous at a and f is continu continuous at g of a. So that's what we write down in the first part of the proof. Suppose g is continuous at a and f is continuous at g of a. Well, now though, that's all I can work with. Uh, maybe off to the side, I'll, I'll kind of mention where I want to end. I just went ahead and wrote it up above. So we want to get to uh, a result that says f of g of x is continuous at a. To get to that result, we'll sort of have to get to the limit as x approaches a of f of g of x equals f of g of a. There's going to be some work in between. We'll see that when that happens. So back to the proof. <clears throat> it, since g is continuous at a, we can now say that the limit as x approaches a of g of x must therefore equal g evaluated at a. Now we're going to go ahead and take advantage of a theorem that we've proven in the past, and I'll go ahead and bring up that theorem right now. The theorem that we've proven in a previous video is the limits of composition. In other words, you have f being continuous at, I'll cover this up and I'll say at g of a, because that, I could just put in any letter I want, and if we happen to know that the limit as x approaches a of g of x is actually equal to g at a, so I just replace the letters of that were b with g of a, then the limit as x approaches a of g of, uh, of f of g of x is going to equal, again, re replacing all those letter b's with g of a's. Okay, so this is a uh, theorem we proved in a recent video, the one prior to this in the playlist. And so let's go ahead and use this theorem. So there we have it. By the limits of compositions theorem, the limit is x approaches a of f of g of x is equal to f of g of a. Again, because going back to that theorem, as long as we know f is continuous at g of a, which was part of our assumption in this theorem, and that g <coughs> itself is continuous at a, which is part of this theorem, then the limit as x approaches a of the composition is equal to f of g of a. So we're pretty good on that. It, it seems a little circular, but uh, such is the feeling or essence of some proofs. They do feel that way when you're first starting.
uh, out and proofs. 